Today's show is brought to you by Barracuda's Locust Point Tavern, located at 1230 East Ford Avenue, Baltimore. Come down and see Billy Hughes. He's been a chef for over 30 years. Barracuda also has daily specials. The codfish cakes are great. I was down there last week, and I had the fish tacos. Brilliant. Billy puts out a great dish, great atmosphere, friendly. What more else do you want from a place? Neighborhood bar and restaurant. Hi, I'm Tim Whitman, and this is the Espresso Soccer Show. Today's guest is no other than Sonny Askew. Cool. Hey, son, uh, <coughs> I've been wanting to get certain guests on here for a while. I had Petey Cringe, I had Mark Metric, uh, and I've always, always wanted to get you on something, talk to you somehow, and I've seen you out. I've seen you about at different places. I like the convention. I think I last saw you at the convention, but I've really never got to talk to you, right? right. I do know about... Your background, I know, uh, you know, you're from Patterson, Patterson High School, went to Patterson High School, then you went to Essex, right, for a year after that? Somewhat. You played a season? Yeah. Played, played a season. <laughs> played right. a season, yeah. then you went off to the pros, right? You, uh, Correct. Was it the Diplomats then? Correct. Right? right? Did you get drafted? No. You didn't get drafted? See, I didn't know whether they had a draft back then or not. I know when I came out, they, they had a draft for the NASL, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, the Tampa Bay Rowdies is who, who I was drafted by, and then also at the time, Baltimore Blast. Oh, okay, right, okay. so it was those two. Uh, I didn't know how your situation, how you got into that exactly. Um, I know. Okay, good. <laughs> good, that's right. I um, uh, was very, um, as I look back on my um, uh, childhood and all and so forth, and, and you, you probably, I'm sure, experienced it. I, uh, I couldn't ask for more. I, I, I jokingly say I grew up in God's country, Bethlehem, whatever. Mm -hmm. That's how happy I was as a child. But anyway, uh, Danny Woolworth, who um, I am great, you know, I'm, I'm extremely grateful for, um, changed my life because mm -hmm. uh, he was doing, uh, playing for, for the diplomats, uh, for, for Den uh, Dennis Vollett and so right, forth. Right, right. And he made a mention. Uh, that you should maybe give, um, come and see this kid play. And, um, you know, funny enough, I, I always played, and, and, and you're, you have experience of this also, was quite a bit of talent around all, all of Baltimore. Uh, and to this day, because me and you have gotten around, we've gotten further than the 695 Beltway sure. or what have you. So when you see other, uh, you know, kids from all over the country and the world, you get an idea where, where, um, where you stand. But anyway, Denny, um, you know, made the comment what I was getting at. I didn't, I didn't uh, score many goals when I played for St. Elizabeth. We had people up front that, that only made you look better and so forth. But, but um, Dennis Vala did come to Patterson Park. He did. He no did kidding. come because of uh, Denny Woolworth's request. And this particular game, I scored three goals against Casa. I had a really nice game. Dennis Vala comes walking up to me and says, hey, listen, we, uh, we'd like to do something in the future. But I'll tell you what, here's what you're going to do. Um, I have no interest in school. Sure, you know, wow, I, no, I, I never took a day. I never took a book home. So, <laughs> never, never. That was one very, night's I, homework. <laughs> that was very similar. I okay. mean, school was just because I had to do it. I, right. Honestly, from and I'm not saying it's the right way, or the wrong way, but it was like a, a jail sentence. I, it was like a right, jail right. sentence for me. I did torture. not. Yeah, it was torture. Yeah. And I knew what I wanted to do from the be very beginning. Yeah, yeah. And but I knew I had to do it. I did not want to be dumb. Right, yeah, I, I, yeah. I wanted to. I knew how to read. I could add. I could do all the stuff. I thought if it didn't, if I didn't have to go ho with homework, yeah, yeah, I'd have probably been a genius. I'm just yeah. maybe not. I'm, you know, I, I should be you. that. But yeah, yeah. I was okay. Get in, get out. Right. But once they said, okay, you're in school for eight hours, six hours. Now you got to go home and do more. No. I thought, I thought there was no right. way I was doing that. Right. And not, then the the soccer, the football was constant. Right. Any chance I got. But sorry, go ahead. Seven. I'm with you with the school. It wasn't stimulating or whatever. Not to knock whatever you know, uh, school or their tech uh, tech uh, approach mm -hmm. to, to uh, and 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 so that was okay with me. I was going to get a job. And when Dennis said this to me, and it was brief, you know. Um, him and, and, and uh, Dunny Wolf were, were talking to me. I took everything as sort of, uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, right, we'll, yeah. We'll, we'll see. But he made the comment, uh, we're not going to be doing anything until February, uh, uh, end of January, February, March. I want you to, 
uh, where, what are you going to do? I said, oh, no, I'll just play ball, get a job or something like that. He goes, I want you to go to college. I said, yeah, yeah, but he goes, I, I don't care what you do, get the games. Right, play so that games. Was the, okay. That was pretty smart. Right, no, sure. And still, again, I thought it was a blow off. Right. So I, I was going to Essex. I was going to go to Essex and see, who knows, I don't know, you know, maybe every. But anyway, I went and played the games. I only seen, I didn't go to, I didn't go to class. Right, I got you. Like you that. did enough got to stay and play your games. Right. And in the final, uh, at Prince George's, come, uh, the referee was Pete Mallett. Uh, uh, American U? Yes. It's a little, a little He guy. was the trainer yeah. for diplomats. So I didn't think much of it. The diplomats are, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then here's Pete at the final doing the referee. He goes, hey, by the way, you know, Dennis, this is what we're going to be doing. And I went, well, they didn't blow me off. This is pretty cool. He was a scout, right? A he was bit. a scout trainer. He was a scout doing what? And he was, this is a funny story. Hey, hey, I tried. Interrupt. But it's very similar. He was a scout, and he was supposed to tell me I was getting drafted. He wanted me to come to American U. I think he was at, or he was at. That's right. No, right. no, you got it. And got I was it. supposed to get a call saying I was getting drafted before the draft came out. And then Duke <laughs> kept on calling me, calling me, calling me. It was. I can tell you this whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. It was, it was strange. Uh -huh. But I ended up getting drafted. But never. I never knew from him. You never. Yeah. yeah I had yeah, no yeah. idea because they were in the right. college process trying to get players to come to college. The same thing with the guy from Duke. Right, I had ten letters from Duke, and I my S I, don't, I didn't take my SATs. Okay, how am I getting letters from Duke? Ten letters <laughs> from Duke, know. but he was a scout, right? Uh -huh. He was also, but he uh -huh. wanted me to come there, but I ended up right with the Tampa Bay rallies. But long uh -huh. story short, so but I find this extremely strange that there was no other process than somebody telling somebody to somebody for you. There was no was there a draft back then? No, I, I don't. How did you get the exposure? I didn't even, I, I used to get all these letters at my grandmother's house. I never opened one. Right, for the colleges. Colleges. Right. right. Didn't open one. Didn't not even see what, if my name was spelled correctly. Right. So what's what fascinating to me is, so by luck, not by luck, but if you weren't, if someone didn't like you, then the chances right. were you weren't going anywhere. It changed the course in my life. Right. right. So I look back on things. I, my, my daughter just got married, and, and the, most of the people at the, the, at the, um, that I invited had a big, big Impact. influence that changed the course, the direction of my life. Um, Denny, Denny Woolworth certainly would have been sitting at that sure, table. Sure, sure, right. Yeah. I remember Denny. Uh, but I, I just can't believe from a men's league mm. that you go mm. to no. the pros almost from um, that. Um, what about high school? Patterson. I know, but Patterson, Patterson was very good. I mean, Patterson, you you guys were very good. I can. This is. I'll never forget this. This is. So, me. I think you're six years older than I am, right? How old are you, Sonny? Sixty-two. 62. Okay, yeah. So you yeah, are yeah, six, yeah. five, six years older than I'm. And so, as a kid, you're my the only thing in my head was to be a pro. That's mm. all I wanted to do since mm. I was a young kid, three years of age. But how? Who do you look up to? Who? Mm. What names do you hear? Locally, it's not like we're we're right, right. over in Europe and there's thousands of right. players and you know and you're looking up to the you have to seek here. you yeah. have to seek right yeah. here yeah. you hear and my parents didn't drive I mean my father drove but he did a nine to five my mother never drove okay so how am I seeing these players so I would hear a name would always come out would be Sonny Askew uh -huh. right uh -huh. Dennis Witt I don't know if you yeah, know yeah. Denny Witt right because well, 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 Denny Witt would stop by the park for here and run a little bit where we yeah. live and come by once in a while to hunt. That's right. and I would look at that and think that's, Witt, that's yeah, cool yeah. right I went, yeah, that's yeah. Cool. and then I would see Sonny Askew right his name would I, then you were playing at Patterson and my brother played for Calvert Hall Scott mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think he might have been a sophomore or something when you mm -hmm. were playing and I remember going to Patterson this is my father took me that one time right uh -huh, uh -huh. and I remember you were in the middle and it wasn't anything that you would say, oh, he scored five goals. Right, right, right. I remember you, you brought a ball down close. One, you, you laid off a ball like a little blindly to the side, off the side of your foot to a player, right? But it was smooth. Yeah, right. right? And I was a kid, right? right? I'm looking, I thought, that was freaking pretty good. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that, was, that was different. And I'm looking at something, I'm saying, well, it wasn't just a goal scorer. This kid's not just fast. He's not. That, it's subtle. Yeah, that was, that, you, but to me, it was big. Because you I, recognize I, it. I remember but you this. recognize to now, you right. got to think. I, was, right. I don't know. I was twelve, not even that. And I'm looking. I'm thinking, 
damn, that was pretty cool. Now I know what they're talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. Or these people talk. Right. And I never really got to see it too much after, because again, how am I getting right, around? Right. How am I getting around? So yourself, like people like you that have made it, right, or not made it at that particular time, but had that name, it gave me something to aspire to. And I'm okay. not just bullshitting you here because you're here, right? right, right. Uh, and the reason I wanted you here is because, again, you, you've got a story, you made it, you, it, it, it's somewhat similar, you didn't grow too far right. away from right. me. Uh, it, it's interesting, but I find this, I never knew this part about you, how you got into the pros, right? I, 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 myself, I, I went the route to where I got lucky Mm -hmm. In a sense, be, I shouldn't say we got lucky. We busted well, our ass to get there. That's going to be my next the question. Tad helps. You, right? But you put yourself in the right place. It's not luck, right? You put yourself in that position you're, and you, you work your ass off. So if that does happen, you're ready, in a sense. I, and, and that's what I believe, right? Luck just doesn't happen. And then someone sees you, but you're prepared. You're prepared for that, that incident. So for me, it was then playing at Calvert Hall. Because there was no, uh, there was no other way to get noticed. Really, I didn't have. And then it was the all state team, and I, right. who may know the all state team? I had no clue about, <laughs> right. no clue okay. about. Because do you remember the Carantas that live near you, Mr. Tom? Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. the Suns played the same time I did, same okay. same era, and they were going to the state team. Stevie and Tom. Steve, Steve and Tommy, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And they were going to this, and they asked me if I wanted to come along. Okay. Because I had no drive, I couldn't drive. Right. right? So right. I went down there, and <laughs> right. made, we all made the team, and then they had the Eastern Division, right? Okay. The, uh, Eastern, and then I was the one that got picked. Okay. I got picked, and then a month later, I'm on the national team, right? On the youth national team. But that's exciting. But uh, well, it's clueless. I've never yeah, been yeah, out of my yeah, back. Yeah. I've been to Ocean City. That's right. Well, that was right. it. And now we're going to Germany for the summer. Yeah, yeah. But my point is. I had, if that didn't happen, go to that state team, and someone didn't like me, yeah. what would happen? Exactly. Uh, yeah, Calvert Hall, you're an All-American, or Patterson, you're an All-American, yeah. but, you know, Tim Whitman or Sonny Askew coming from Calvert Hall or Patterson, who cares? Who cares? Right, that's right. Who cares? So this, but that, someone liked you, mm. or someone liked me, mm. and then that's the right. next step, but we, we did what we had to do to prepare to get to that level, but... It, coincidence, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. It's I find it really crazy that somebody, Dennis Violet, yeah, came yeah. to Powder. Was it the bowl? Where, where was N it? No, they, uh, they were just starting to use Lutz. Oh, okay, there they you were go. Just starting to use yeah. Lutz. <laughs> yeah. and, they, and he saw you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're from that, yeah, from that yeah. position. Yeah. Now, now, what happens after that? He sees you, he tells you he wants you to come out, right? He wants, uh, uh, and then I play that final, and uh, we win uh, over in Prince George's County. And Pete Mallet and I went. Wow, they are, uh, they're following up. They, you know, it's not. Uh, and then I go to some practices, and I actually go to practice with. Uh, um, you talk about looking up to who I'm going to try, who I always try to emulate, and now I'm going to practice with Johnny Barazzi and Paul Skurdy. Okay, they and were I, on the team. They were on the. They they were practice. invited. Okay, practice. Right, they right, were right, invited, squads, like, right, okay. and I thought it was going to be just me, and it was it was a mixed emotion thing because I'm going. Uh, you know, a couple of weeks later, I'm given a date, and and I'm invited, and I'm thinking it's just me going to commute over, and and now I'm understanding that I'm going with them too, guys, and right? I'm going. All right, what chance do I have? Type of feeling, right. but they're my idols, and we shared a lot of time in the car, and I thought the world of both of them, personally. Both of them walked on water, as far as I was concerned. Um, but um, not everybody plays the same in sure. certain circumstances. That's right. That's right. And uh, um, I was uh, I was pretty young, 18 or 19. They liked what they saw. They kept me around. And um, and uh, um, Dennis Vollett played me in '77 in in 11 games, and it was uh, off and running. Right. Gordon Bradley came in 78 and never seen my uniform. I thought I was finished. Right. They sent you abroad, right? Sent me to uh, Preston North End. Uh, I trained Where's there. Where's that? Uh, in England uh, with Noby Styles. Noby was um, in the 66 World Cup um, with England when they right. won the World Cup against. So there I was, you know, wow, dig this, right? Because I was. Were a, you excited about it or were you a little afraid? Both. Both. I, right. I, there um, you, go. Yeah. Um, you know, they sent me over there. And I got to go, you know, uh, I've been to Scotland when I was 16 or 15, whatever, with, with this youth team 
that Vol Volgenstein, I, I can't recall, yeah, he took us over for three weeks. And I remember, you know, it was different. And, and England and Scotland isn't that charming when you're young. No, you know guys, no, old, the yeah. weather, that's right. Uh, ah, the food, you're not used to the food, right? <laughs> so, so a train with uh, uh, Preston, Gordon says, listen, at the end of the season, I never seen my uniform. I thought, you know, it's finished. Uh, you know, I'm going through a long story short. And uh, he goes, listen, I want you to train. I want you to be a part of this. And, uh, um, and I trained with, with Preston for two weeks. I come back. Oh, so you I, were over there for two weeks. And okay. I, I come back. And um, then they tell me, because there, there was a thing going on. They were going on strike because they didn't want no foreign players there. Sure. So sure. I come back. Well, that wasn't for, uh, I didn't go for Scotland. So they sent me to Scotland. So I come back, and I marry my high school sweetheart, uh, Linda. God bless her. Um, and we go, and I train with Celtic. I train with Celtic That's for two weeks. Right? Yeah. Celtic's big time, right? And, uh, and, and then I go to Queen of the South for the next two or three months, um, never realizing at all, uh, quite at all, that what I was learning was powerful. Powerful. At the time. At the time. Right. No idea that I had no So now idea. that you, uh, not now, but when did you recognize and say, Hey, that that's that's different. I need that. That was that was interesting, right? That could change my game a little bit, or that's the way the game is played, and now I need to understand this for me to evolve, right? To go to the next level. When could, did you realize? Be a better that? question, right? Because it clicked. You 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 have to make a self assessment of yourself. It, it, can you hang? Can you hang? Are you belong or you're delusional? It's one or the other. Somebody's gonna pat you on the back and say, you know, you don't really this this is. So I'm playing a five-a-side with, uh, with the first team with Celtic uh, uh, in, in Parkhead, wherever they played, and so forth. And, you know, you're some you know, freckle kid from America. It's all American. <laughs> right, they, they don't, like, yeah, they don't like Americans yeah, anyway. Right. right. That's right, right. And, you know, the names and the stuff that they're calling me, it's depressing. It's raining every single day. They're calling me an ugly American. I've got to bathe in this tub that all these guys are sitting in right, there they paying. Been, right. It's full of mud. And you gotta walk in it like you belong. Did you have to clean any boots or anything like that? So I'm training, and and what what is you you pick up the nuances, the little subtleties. One time, you look at Bogachevich, Matt yeah, Messi, nah, and all nah. these players. They bring a ball down from 50 yards, and their Just demeanor there, and body they're language. They're ready for the next thing. Hasn't changed. No, they're ready it, for the next it's play. It's dead like a bag of cement. Mm -hmm. You 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 know whether you recognize it or you don't. Um, so, so I'm over there, you know, feeling sorry for myself at times. Sure. Um, yeah, get right, right. Trying and, to get over uh, that. But, but the stuff every day, raining, and then the mud and, and harsh. Hardness. People talking to you like you're pond scum. Um, and <laughs> I remember practice, there's a player by the name of Danny McGrain. I think he was the captain of the Scottish national team at the time. And practice was over, and I was walking off with everybody. He says, where the heck are you going? Oh, God. Oh, geez. I mean, he, he, he goes, to... what the Right. You, you, right. You say it, it you matter, an American, yeah. you got shoes to pick up. You can buy, get out of here. He wouldn't oh. even let me walk with him. You know what I mean? Oh. Not, not with him in general, but the team as a group. He singled me out. But all these things added so much like uh, toughness and, and me, resilience. Not you, right? Yes. right. Resilience, and yeah. you could keep pushing through. I mean, yes. that's tough. I don't know that I could have handled that. When I first came in, uh, it was complete. It was different than the the atmosphere had changed in the sense there wasn't too much of that cleaning the boots, the, the young players. And everything. So when like this guy, well, you know, and Kenny came over and tried to implement a little bit of that, and I was the young kid, right? I was mm -hmm. 17 at the time, and they were talking, trying, thinking about implement a little bit of that, mm. and I wasn't going to have any fuck freaking part of that. Right. None. I just, right. I, I just wasn't going, that wasn't my style. I understand that you're going to work your yeah, ass yeah, off, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I thought, well, let me do that. If I'm not good enough, you get okay. rid of me. It's that simple. That's fine. Right? And That's I'm right. okay with it. But don't degrade me to where I'm going to have to do I huh. understand this is tradition, but I would have really had a hard time with that. Mm -hmm. Right? I remember getting booted out of practice for doing tricks. Right, constantly. We'll get into that a little later, but yeah. I can remember. All right, you got to keep your car running, and, they, and I'd have to leave practice. Right, and I'm keep like, your car running. So right, yeah, they're not telling me, they're not teaching me anything. They're not, you know, the older players yeah. are happy because there's no competition. Right, that I'm, I'm out of here. Yeah. Uh, they're not helping me at all. They're yeah. trying to put me down. So what you're talking about, the same thing, mm -hmm. but much 
much worse because you're over in their country and yeah, everything like right. that, right? And, and that's tough. And that does give you some some resilience. You're either going to go one way or the not, the other. And if you can survive that, I would assume, and I'm only asking, that's why I'm asking, I'm assuming if you survive that, you're better off maybe? Oh, substantially. Okay. Mentally, right. substantially. And you asked a great question about when, when something's going to make... So in other words, you're playing wherever, Patterson Park, uh, uh, Patterson, uh, Patterson High School, and you're all that. You have time to receive the ball sure, and turn. Sure, yeah, you can yeah. do what you like, right, right. and people are blowing smoke up your butt all the time. You're wonderful. You can turn. Right, you can right. beat people who, who doesn't approach the game like I did. The game's not as fast. And I'm, playing, I'm playing with St. George, Budge, Tri you know, all these older guys after practice, before practice. And I'm beating some kid that, that does well right, at right. St. Joe. What do we right, no. <laughs> You know, but you can make all that. So when they were playing one time, one time, one right, time, right. back, back, space, back, back. Knowing your space and, yeah, the time one, you have. One, 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 one. I was going, you can't play what? And, and I went, You wanted to handle one. it. You wanted to handle the ball because that's what you're used to doing, right? And, and, and that ain't the game. you got to play off of people. It's got to be one, one, or you're going to get hurt. It's going to be difficult. They're going to back put you then. Down. People were coming at you, cracking you, right? And I, oh, they didn't give a run. No, back then it was. Uh, something's going on. I better learn. Sure, quick. And once you pick it, once you get it, it's it's like anything. I, I uh, it's like a revelation. And, and now I understand it. Right. I got it. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you can't teach the touch. I can't teach you to be who you are. Technically, either you got that. Oh, Timmy's got it. Oh, I can take him now to make him to see the game the way I want him to see the game. It's tough. Right. Tough. Click, click, click. I play the way I'm facing. You get back. You play three, one, 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 two, deceiving. Uh, uh, I'm inviting, inviting people in. One, 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 right. one. Once that clicked, I came back, and, 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 he, and it was even in the, the front page of the post. Gordon Bradley said, Sonny Askew is the bread and butter of this team. Oh, that might have taken you to another level, didn't it? Another level. You better have the level. I had it. I just felt that feeling that you get that nothing literally mentally or physically can stop you. Stop, yeah, you could. I, yeah, you better have it. Well, it's and like, I got it. It's, 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 it's crazy that, it's, that there's a time you think, I can do whatever I want in the field. I'm okay with this. I'm okay with, not okay. I'm, I'm now going to be creative. I'm going to be procreative. Instead of when you're first starting off, you're a little reactive, right? What do people think? Uh, Am I doing this right? You know, so and so. What are the older players thinking? Then you get to that point where it clicks, and you now you're the man. Now right, you're the right. one, and you you want the ball. You're going no to try question. to trade. You're opening up. You're seeing the game from a whole different perspective now, and just from that one touch, I guess your timing's got to be different. Uh, your movement's got to be earlier. Your thought process has to be a little bit different to scan the field quicker, right? When you're doing one touch or that that yeah, yeah. what they're teaching you're not you're as like, rattled. Well, you're not. Yeah, when you have time, now you've got time on the ball. Now you can create space. You can see more of the game. Uh, and then take out the fact that they can't get close to you as quick, as quick right? Instead right, right. so of you hold the ball, hold the ball. I think now you'll look at like a Barcelona, or what you used to. Now they say it was one touch. It's not so much one, it's two touch. Mm -hmm. right? The mm -hmm. guy who receives, he looks up, right? Mm -hmm. And then you get guys wide. It's different things. Now you have players taking on players because they receive the ball at a particular time and space, mm -hmm. right? And they're, they're not closing that gap down. So I think it's evolved from what you're talking about to that. And now it's, it's, it's changing a little bit again. You know, you remember when the Barcelona was doing when it was oh tiki tock, God, right? And they showed Manchester United in the final. And man, you didn't know what they were doing. Mm. They were looking around. Right, 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 right. What, what is this? And now the game's changed a little bit where people drop off. They're not, you know, pressing. Yeah, yeah, now yeah. it's yeah. dropped, got to the point where you got Liverpool. They're pressing high. They're not letting you play with the ball no more. Okay. You're not coming out. I'm right. pressing high. We're uh -huh. going to get you up up high uh -huh. on the field. Uh -huh. And if if you lose it, if we lose it, and yeah, we're yeah. up high, well, we can get it back in their area right? uh -huh. a lot uh -huh. quicker. And so now it's now it's come back to like these very athletic, hardworking, mm -hmm. skillful players. I think right now is probably the I, I again. Mm -hmm. Do you think this is the top level right now, or do you think it was uh, a couple years back? Do you think? I don't, I don't um, follow it at all. Oh, you don't? Okay. All right. But, but right. I, um, I'm very aware of a style. Sure. I don't like to come across and talk about it much to be some sort of like soccer snob that right. I look down. I just don't find it, uh, a lot of it that appealing, except um, it looks all too predictable, except the Barcelona. So everybody, like, if you don't like Barcelona, I don't know if you have a pulse. <laughs> but 
the, at that particular, uh, I think you're talking year, about a year or two, year. was unreal with how comfortable they are in oh, tight situations. Oh, yeah. So comfortable, touch, touch, touch. Who cannot like that? And they were compared to when I was a, a kid, um, I, I had an extraordinary um, amount of enthusiasm of reading about Pelé and Santos right, right. and the Brazil. Sure, sure, the Brazil I can name the not the 11. And, yeah. So 1970, and see them. Sure. I wanted to walk like him. I wanted to wear my socks like him. I wanted to do, you know sure, what I mean? Sure, he had the high tongues. All the high the tongues, kings, the strings hanging out. Kings. Yeah, yeah. I got a That's picture right. of me when I, I think I was eight, and I had the Pelé Kings on. Yeah. With the tongues up here. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they had the gold yeah. right here. Yeah. Oh, my oh. God. I used to get my boots from... From Europe, ah. it was called Carlton Imports or whatever it was. That's where I would have to get them. I so, didn't realize. And I, and I remember right. Pelé, Pelé, and I forget the winger. Oh my gosh, it was Jairzinho. Jairzinho, that's it. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Yeah. And, right. So I remember that. I, that's crazy. But today's show is brought to you by Gunpowder Lodge. is the number one place to watch Premier League and all your soccer games in Baltimore County for great food, great people, great atmosphere, featuring weekly chef specials. They also have a great setup with outside seating and a fenced-in children's playground next to the Gunpowder River. Happy hours, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m., located at 10092 Bel Air Road, Kingsville, Maryland. Uh, yeah, the style has, it, it always changes depending on who's yeah, yeah. winning it that particular year, right? But going back, so you, you realize this is the way to play now. This is what I... Uh, I'm attracted to. You know, I've, I like uh, um, nice, polished, beautiful, beautiful players. And, and there's hard workers, and there's, it's a reason why there's chocolate and vanilla. You know, everybody you need likes bit, something. Um, that's right. Okay. Uh, and that's okay. Um, you know, uh, the technical the technical is the beauty. The, the ability to go by, Ronaldinho, to go by changes everything now. Because if you've got a player that now we have to adjust. Boom, right? Now, now what's going to happen? So everybody wants to see the player that makes you sit up, right? He's got the ball. Neymar, the Messi, the right, Cristiano, right. Who you Ronaldinho, like this? You're right, right. Johan uh, was that. a big part of my uh, uh, psyche. Cruyff. Johan Cruyff uh, yeah. was uh, probably one of the top players in the world ever. They always rate him. Right. And uh, again, twice European, I mean, right. world player of the year. Right. Uh, and, you know, he changed He's, the game, supposedly, with uh, the Barcelona style, right? That's what and the Dutch a lot of it, the team. Dutch national yeah, team. Yeah. Uh, and Sonny was actually playing with Johan when he came over towards later later part of his career, right? 33, 30 yeah, so years. 30 yeah, years, yeah, the later right. part of his career came over, and that's what happened in the NASL days. Yes, a, lot, yeah. a lot of the players that were almost finished came over, right? And they were taking a exuberant amount of money at that time when a lot of times they didn't deserve it, right? They did, they did great where they were at, but they were on the end tail here and paying them a lot of money and a lot of them weren't flourishing for that expectation of, well, you're 33, 34 mm -hmm. years old. It's not mm -hmm. that easy. You lose mm -hmm. a step, right? Mm -hmm. But a long story short is Sunday was alongside one of the greatest players ever. And I've, I've heard stories, and I don't know the, the, the whole... I, I've heard you interviewed before, and it doesn't seem there was... Uh, uh, a, I, don't know, I don't know, there was something going on between yourself and him. And I don't know that story exactly. Yeah, you do. I do? Because you already mentioned it with you and what Kenny was going to do with... Oh, so it was very similar. Okay, right. Similar or... In, um, or you know, um, I, I have a lot to say because, uh, in, in general, in, um, in the past, whether it be bar rooms, restaurants, or what have you, about Johan, because there's, he, he's, he's uh, world player of the year. You know, I, I don't think when Johan was alive, he was talking about me. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? So he, he was all that and more. He was a, uh, a different uh, um, personality. He was that. He was that incredible. He was uh, just amazing, and and I played against him four times because he was with LA mm -hmm. the year mm -hmm. before, um, and I, I I would be against quite a few times. I, he had me out on the I had him out on the right, and I was showing him purposely the right, and uh, you know he take the right because I'm gonna slide tackle you. Yeah, it's right, gonna be right. a throw in. Okay, and you know I, I swore that this was gonna happen, and I was on the ground and he was gone. So he he was um, he was special in a lot of ways. 
you know, uh, it wasn't favorable, it wasn't good, we didn't have um, verbally a r good re relationship at all, at all. But uh, you have to stand up for yourself. You got to. You have to, or you're going to get, you you're going to go it. further and further. And that was one of the hardest things. I'll give you a little example, so I don't want to make you think that you're coming up against Johan Cruyff, you're saying, man, this That's is right. part of the world. That's this right. is, and if you don't stand up for yourself, because not all the time are these great players right. And I'm not right neither a lot of times. And it's got, sometimes you got, you got to put up. If you don't, well, then you're going to get pushed down, pushed down, pushed down. There was an incident where when I first started, they would say, you'd have to leave the field, keep your car running. So something happened during the course of the uh, training, and a player said it was Timmy Whitman. I went, are you kidding me? I said, it wasn't Timmy Whitman. Timmy Whitman. And coach, he's, I don't know why he's not even seeing it, right? And he says, you got to leave. You got to get off the field. Oh, I walk off the field and I leave because I had no choice. Yeah, yeah. So the next time this is, we're practicing again. Same thing, same guy. And I lost it. I lost it. And I, after, as soon as it ended, practice, I ran over to him. Ran over to the, the player. Right. And I said, say one more word. I say, say, and I'm, I'm my, I said, say, say one more word. I'm not going to use the guy's name because he's not here. Say one more word and see what happens. And Kenny was mm. walking alongside me, did nothing, mm. just stayed back and watched. And ever since then, mm. that, that changed. It changed Change. everything. It yeah. changed everything, right? Uh, this guy was trying, again, they don't want players taking their position. There's competition. They don't want that. Right. One more incident. There was a, I, was a, <laughs> there was, I can tell you a 500 incident, but I'm not going to go there. Uh, top player came from another team. Right, and he played for his national team and all that. Oh, yeah. He came over to our, t our, our team, yeah, yeah. and he was a top player when he left his club and came over to us, and I was the captain, though. I was the captain. I think I was 26, 27, yeah. and I was the captain. So I play a ball. He, uh, so he's standing. I played maybe a ball over here. It wasn't a good ball, maybe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Raises his hands. Yeah. It goes like this. I said, you blank, blank. I'm not going to say the word, right, right. blah, 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 blah. So, uh, and I'm, I'm the captain. So sh I should be, have the right to say something. Right. And then right. I, say, I say to the coach, I say, he says, you can't call him. I said, listen, you have me as a captain for a reason. That mm. guy, right, he could have made a bad ball into a good ball by just working. Right. He wanted to embarrass me. That's right. He wanted to do that. I said, no question. That, that is not, if that was done reverse, I hope somebody get on my ass. Right? The whole team's got to do the same type of thing. A bad ball, a good ball, we work for each other, right? and then his talents can come through. Right? But when you do that, that that's trouble. And, and he says, you're right, but just please don't call him that. <laughs> and so I do know, again, it's not just Sonny coming across, he's bitter about Johan or somebody else. It happens every day. Right? It happens all the time. And if you don't, because it's a very competitive world. And yeah. if it's not, you're going to be put to the bottom, and you won't have a job, you won't have a salary. No and then question. your wife leaves you, kid, you won't have kids, and there's the end of that. So go ahead. With yeah, I, I'm laughed uh, because I'm reminded that something John Kerr said to me, because, you know, you two are a lot oh, alike. John. He said, and, and now I can see why, because well, I was in the middle, I mean, I'm sorry, it was four across, uh, four, four, two, whatever mm -hmm. you want to call okay. it. Johan could r roam about. He, he was allowed, had free whatever. range. Right? Whatever, who knows. Sure. Or, and and you got to make up for it. So if I'm out on the right, I always tell the same story. Sure. You know, and, I haven't and, heard it. And if I lose possession, because I'm able to think for myself, right? You know what I mean? Okay. I feel pretty comfortable with myself, and especially on the field, if anywhere. Sure. Right. And 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 um, and and it doesn't work out the way I would like it to work out. I've always been taught this isn't rocket science. This game hasn't changed all that much. When they have the ball, we try to get defensively and keep them from scoring. I don't want to get too technical, you know, technical here that we got all these new formulas and systems. Right. Bull crap. Right. You get by full side, you work, you, you know, and so forth. So if I lost down on the right, I was always taught that we're going to slide over. So and shift over. Shift, shift over. Shift over. Shift over. He, well, there's no shifting going on. You know what I'm saying? There's no whatsoever shift, and you don't do and you don't think for yourself. Play it back. Everything is to be played back. And so it took everything, all the thought, all the imagination out of me. Who wants to play then? Yeah. Who wants you to know, play? Got to, I had five goals in like six or seven games, or four goals in five. In the first five, we, we were a nightmare in the first five. And we got $5 million they spent on Johan. Nobody mentions Juan Lozano. This guy was our million-dollar player. 
Juan Lozano comes over because Golf and Western, we were owned by Golf and Western. They wanted to compete with Warner Brothers and the Cosmos. So they bought, Gordon goes over and gets Juan Lozano. This guy's Belgian player of the year. He's uh, Antwerp, won the UEFA Cup. Then he went to Real Madrid. He was He's big uh, time. Uh, big time. Real Madrid midfielder, this, 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 knocking it. He comes over. He asked Gordon, in the, while he was in Europe, I'm the man. I'll run the show. This guy's 24 years old. So we, he, we fly back to, he flies back to Jacksonville. Here's our million dollar guy. The guy walks around as if he's not bothered by anything. <laughs> he looks uh, in a, but it's all deceiving. It's all, he knows exactly what he's doing. He's thinking all the time. This guy can play, man. I'm, so we could never see it in practice, and we were like, oh, God, this is the million-dollar boy, right? And, but, but Sonny Werblin, um, and this is exciting to me. Sonny Werblin is the reason behind. He owned Madison Square Garden. He built the Meadowlands. He built the Jets, Namath, Jack Benny. It was big time, was big time mm -hmm. right? So it was a surprise. This is the story I'm told. I can only tell you my story. Sure. That's all I know, is he went and said, hey, he flies down to San Domingo, private jet, because that's where we were training. I bought you Johan Cruyff. And anybody that knows Johan, he's difficult. Uh, whether you, you know, love him or hate him, is wonderful, he's a brilliant player, and, he, and, he, and to this day, as is, is, uh, um, confrontational as things were, I learned an awful lot from him. And I, I think when you get older, you, you look back, you, that's yeah, right. Yeah, and you yeah. said, well, maybe some of it was me, maybe, but uh, you think about that. I even, I had a love-hate with Kenny Cooper, right? Okay. I had a love-hate. I mean, uh, I could go into a thousand stories about it. Okay. Uh, me throwing a bottle at him, me, <laughs> okay. you know, I, to chase, you know, it was crazy. <laughs> that's right. Uh, there was a lot of different things, but then there's things I think now, as I get older and uh, look back, and I'd say, well, maybe I wasn't the easiest, right? Maybe I wasn't the easiest, and he had a lot of do, he had to handle this, he had to handle that, and he had to handle this, and so I have an appreciation which what, what he That's was right. trying to do. That's right. Bits and pieces as I get old, but when you're young and you're fired up. That's right. And you're, you're, you're thinking about uh, but, yourself but a little bit. But that's the very player we're looking for. The very, the very player I want is, is got piss and vinegar. Uh, I, I, you, I think so, know, too. It's the very player. I want, I want if I had to do anything, as a, 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 I did that coach for like 20 years, if I had to tame down a little bit as opposed to have to pick up, I would rather say, hey, hey. And it's so true. That is uh, so true. Myself and uh, Mark Metric and myself were having the same discussion, and I said, I'll take the, I'll right. take the player that has a reputation. Don't hit, don't don't take him. Don't mm, do this. Mm, don't. He says, well, maybe that's your forte, handling mm, these mm. type of players. No, but I see what you're talking yeah. about. You see something there. That's right. Right. It's a lot easier. That, that was, that's perfect. You know, instead of bringing them up, yeah. calm uh, them down. Uh, you can calm them down. I think for a little period of time, and something happens. You yeah. know, sometimes they self destruct. Sometimes. But I'll, I'll try to get the best out of them for two years if I can. <laughs> I'll have right. their back. I know what they're going through. Uh, but I like that. I like that yes. fight, right? I want the creativity. That's right. I want them to be different. And again, we were talking uh, with Petey and uh, Mark, the best players in the world. That's Think right. about some of the best players in the world, right? Have you, uh, uh, Maradona, right? Mm. Maybe a Georgie Best, mm. right? They all have this edge. Oh, And they're no all question. different, right? They're all different types of players. We would say, oh, they're, they're out of the box. They're... Yeah, yeah, no question. They're not staying in the lines, right? They're not staying in right. lines, but they're thinking. They're thinking, they're thinking, they're thinking. And I would take that, not them, obviously, I know. but I would yeah, take yeah. that type of player that has that imagination and, and express that imagination, and I think that's contagious. But when you're stifled, when you're held back, as no what question. you were saying you were doing, I don't think I would be playing the game. You know, yet all the years I've coached, and this mind is, I want you to attack. I yeah. want you to. I want you to want the ball. I want you to attack yeah. because I think it's a progressive thought, right? When you're defending, you're reacting a lot of yeah. times, right? I want you to feel the whole game, to express the whole game. I want you to get forward. I want you to have the ball. I want you to defend. I want you to to see the unseeable at the time. I want you to think those steps ahead because then you keep growing. If you're only allowed to do so much, mm. your game stops. Your game I, is um, right here. I never wanted to. Uh, I, I was very fortunate to have wonderful teams. I mean, they were already selected, um, but not to kill the spirit, but not to play under fear. In other words, I, I kind of always felt, for whatever reason, I don't have to be validated. I was very comfortable in how I um, 
um, perceived in, yourself, right? in myself mm -hmm. and holding my own. Is this revered? Here you go. The world has chosen you. It's the greatest, one of the greatest of all. And and I see why. And they got Juan Lozano, then a, a Dutch national team, and Vam. And I'm holding them my own. Your RFK is fifty. Th can, can can you can you produce? Are you capable? And I was capable. And you I thought, thought it, you were and capable. Very, right. and I was, I'm okay. So when I went into coaching, for me to have to be to hear myself, I was didn't have to hear myself. But I'd get a, if if I could talk to the kid at halftime or what have you, and build that kind of uh, confidence. If I could build, you make a mistake because uh, in the back when our own 18, because I want to live and die by the sword that we're going to keep possession, we'll be okay. We might not win this game. We might have to change some things in maybe crucial times. But let me tell you something. I got your back, and I'm not going to humiliate you. There's no need for that. I want you to have the trust, and all of us will be fine. Oh, and, one and second. Morgan, can you see? This is a, what we were talking. A lot of times I was talking about the same thing. I mean, very, it's funny that you're talking about it. I, I kind of got a smile with this going on because it's exactly what I'm trying to preach. That's what I, I preach. Uh, and I'm not saying it's right or wrong, right? It's, it's what I, I, yes, yeah. because when I was a young player, and you probably felt it too as a young player, you were getting shit on. Mm -hmm. People wanted to shit on you, yeah. right? And yeah. they didn't want you around. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I became a more senior player, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or I would take care of the younger players, mm -hmm. I felt there was no reason to shit on anybody. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. mean, I don't understand. I, I never got that. And for a coach <laughs> to yeah. belittle someone mm -hmm. is such a, a cowardly, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I think, and there's something wrong with that, with that person. And I don't know what that, that story is with that person. They have to belittle a, a, a player. If I pick this player, is it my job as a coach to take them from one place to the next? Yes. Right. Uh, that's that's what the yes. word coach means. Yes. I'm taking one player to the next, or a person from one area to another area, and it's the same thing. So when you're a coach, you're taking this player yes. from to the next because I believe in you. Yes. Right? Your instinct as a kid, as a baby, is what you want somebody to hold you. You feel safe. Yes. Right. Yes. And you grow from that. If you're not, if you're shunned, you, you're it's scientifically proven, right? Physically, you don't grow. So what's the difference when you're coaching? So if they feel something that, and there's confidence, and they, they now you're allowing them to grow and express this, who knows what you can have, mm -hmm. right? If you water it, mm -hmm. it, it will grow. Mm -hmm. So I, when you belittle it, it's this hardcore, old school, kick them up the ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not saying you don't work yeah, hard. That's right. We're not, saying, We're not that. saying that. We're not saying that at all. Of course I want you to work yeah. hard, right? But I believe in you, and I know you can work yes. harder. And then if they don't, well, this is the the job. Well, if you don't, well, then you're not around. That's right. It's, I've done everything I can. To, to, That's right. And again, I'm not I'm not uh, babying you because now this movement, you can't say anything wrong to the kid. You can't. That's We're right. not talking no, about no. that. I think it's treating people mm -hmm. like humans. Mm -hmm. I mean, treating people with respect. And I think coaches, where they screw up, right? What this is my uh, my belief mm -hmm. is. They say, you have to respect me, then I respect you. I, it's the reverse for me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For, you're my yeah, player. Yeah. I want you to, I'm going to earn your respect. Right. If I earn you res your respect, Good point. what's going to happen? Yeah. You're going to yeah. respect me. Yeah. Right? I've proven to you that, that I've earned your respect. Uh, I'm treating you right. We're doing this. And I think then the player, you have the player. Yes. You'll have the player. But I think what happens is a lot of old school thought is you respect your elders. Yes. No matter, no matter, <laughs> right, what, right, everybody right, right. gets respect. Right, yeah. No matter what, right. everyone gets respect. But I think what happens there is that if I say you have to respect me no matter what, mm. this There's is where I had problems. Yeah, I had problems as growing up. No, no. How no, no, am I respecting no. you for when you're treat you're treating everybody like an asshole? Right, right. And you're you are an asshole, right? And we can see you doing this. Right. I, I'm not, I can't I'm not respect buying that. It. Right. I'm not buying it. Then yeah, there were some yeah. hardcore people that would be on be on your ass, but they, they were honest. They had integrity. That's right. I had no problem with them. Yes. I, 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 I'd follow them. That's right. And so I think coaching, when you're talking about your coaching style, I mean, I'm 100% behind yeah. what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah. And you're talking different eras. Yeah, yeah. And yet you think that. Why? Why do you think that way? Now, why do you think that way, coaching, when in the era you grew up, that wasn't the way? Um, 
I think a lot had to do with uh, John Kerr Sr. Senior, right. and Gordon Bradley. They were teachers, they were caring, and uh, they liked me a lot. That has a lot to do with things. That's what I just coaches, said in the very yeah. beginning. You feel that. They, yeah, I, you feel yeah. you can venture yes, from that. Yes. Right. And, and um, um, a, a, a great deal of gratitude towards, uh, especially uh, them two, come to mind. Um, so you, they were your mentors in a sense, right? And you appreciated what they did for you, and so yeah. you carried that on because that made you feel decent. It, it um, yeah, yes. Um, so what is it? You know, what is revered is is the highest level. There's the highest, right? Whatever people write about the world, whether the Premier Division or the NASL here at that time, and you get to see it, and you hold your own, you feel good. There's nothing that this other people, as far as soccer was concerned, that could harm me. Um, it's certainly a parent, or I don't need to, um, I didn't need to hear myself shout. In other words, if I told my wife I love her, you know, a hundred times during the day as opposed to once. Every once. so often. Right? Yeah, every so often. And I keep uh, shouting all these things to players on the field. Even myself, I told from time to time, would you shut up and sit down? Would you just shut up and sit down? If you don't like what's going on, we'll talk about it later. Or get me off. But I don't want to have to keep listening. And they ignore you. It's selective uh, hearing. That's absolutely. They're selective hearing. And they're hearing. thinking about you and the game. They can't I, concentrate I, about I, the game completely. Say a few things. If the mistake's going to happen, if we're going to lose for three or four clubs, like I said, I felt that confident, whether it was right or wrong. I don't need so-and-so's parent telling me that we, uh, you know, you know, have somebody in the wrong position and so forth. I, it, wouldn't it, bother, it, it wouldn't even affect you. It wouldn't affect me. I, I told him, Mark, I, I you never know, had problems with parents. Practice sessions or what have you, I never felt like that there was all this stuff to accomplish um, because I need to know that these people are watching me to satisfy them. <laughs> we'll play a five-a-side. I want to see who, I want to see who's going to get the balls out of the bag. I want to see who starts things on their own. You know, all these things are, uh, are characters of, Character if you learn, of, right? you see for, in people just on their own, the greatest, I mean, I'm not, uh, I didn't want to become a, 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 a professional cheerleader. We all need it, don't get me wrong, but man, if I can give you, you take care of yourself, man, we're going to be on to something here, because you make the decisions on the field, and if you give that power, you'll see it come alive, like, uh, I was, you know, fortunate to, to um, um, go to the regionals a number of times in the final four twice, made it to the final once. We made it, and, and it was a really good feeling. That's a good feeling oh. to see the team adapt to a certain. Um, and they believe. They believe. They believe in you, you believe, believe in, in them, them, and then it's contagious. Yes. And the kids are excited, and they that's want an to adrenaline. be. That's <sighs> adrenaline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. that's it. When you felt like you've connected, right? There's yes. a connection. When there's a connection, there's some kind of electricity, right? Yes. Yes. So. When you've connected with something or somebody, or and they believe in it, it's it's, it's, good. Pre it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's cool. It's so good. when I'm a coach, when I coach, it's nothing like playing. There's not, not for me. There's nothing like playing in the world. I mean, that was that's where I got my high. I you mean, ain't that kidding. everything else was forgotten. That's where I got my high. Right. And then the next best <laughs> thing for me at the time after that was coaching. Okay. And yeah. then that gave yes. me a different type of high. Once I realized I couldn't play anymore. Yeah. That that. Was my next tie because I always I've, I've always been into the psychology of the game or psychology of people. I'll okay. stare and watch because I'm always curious, curious, yes. curious, curious. I get bored with things quite easy. Yes. If I've already accomplished it, I'm bored. Yes. I don't want to do it again. I want to I want to do something else. Yes. And so uh, that's the beauty of this whole thing. The whole game changes constantly. Every play changes. Kids change. Uh, their so height, their size, the, their weight, their their abilities, their what's going on in their head. So it never ends. And that's, I think, the beauty of the high for me to get into that. But from your standpoint, it's, it's very similar to what we're talking about. Uh, I'm going to change a little bit, go off. So your day, when you were eight years old, I, just, I know it's a long time ago, right? But when you were eight years old, what did your day with consist of? When did you realize you wanted to become a, a pro? Um, I, I was never, um, um, I was around a circle of, of people my, all, my whole life that were really good. Right. You, you know a lot of the same sure. people. 
and or Ortman Field, the, the dirt field, not it's Ortman. Um, I was around an awful lot of good players. I was starting to sense, though, that I could hold. Did you um, have it from a young kid that you wanted to be a pro, or you no. just wanted to be with these people and compete with these people and be? I better? don't think I would let me personally my emotions. It'd be too much of a setback. Uh, you know what I mean? If you didn't hit that, if far. I didn't hit that, it'd be too powerful. Um, I, I, I was on the corner, highest corner, every night of my life. And it's funny, we're fortunate. I, well, I don't, you know, you asked me when I was eight. We're, and when I was growing up, it was eight, 10, 10, 12, right. 12, 14, Two 14, years 14 16. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, we were always, they make a big deal when they say, oh, you know, so and so is playing two years. Oh, who gives a crap? We always did. We always 10, did. 10, 10, we always 12, did. Um, but now it's something. Um, but eight years old, I, I started playing uh, with Vernon Reese because you got a free Coke over Patterson <laughs> in, in blocks. Um, oh, you know, geez. if you wanted to be a soccer player, I, I grew up in this, like, a magnificent... Yeah, the right environment oh, for that. God. Everybody, the culture was there, all that was there. There was only two areas at the time. It was Highland Town, which was probably more so than where I grew up, and Northeast, right? Or over at Heron Run. Okay. We had a bit of a group that would go yes. over every day over the park. Yes, so every day. Every day. So that's what I'm when asking you. Own. Well, that, this is what I'm leading to a little Weird. bit. So when you're eight years old, what, why did you want to continue? Why did you want to play soccer? Why did you get all your credibility from that? Did you get some kind of assurance? Did, why did you do that at eight years of age? Wanted to do Because everybody else was doing it? Yes. And you wanted to fit in that society? They're all the um, every kid went to St. Elizabeth's. I was one. Of the only. Were you were born in Highland Town, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So St. Elizabeth's is on this end, mm -hmm. and, and '83 William Pack is on this end. I was one of the only who went to '83. Everybody went to St. Elizabeth's. St. Elizabeth's had a team, eight, ten. Don't need need strike gear. Strike gear. <laughs> How do you know that? I'm telling you, I remember How do you know all that. Man, that's. A, <laughs> Um, and, and I joined in, and we played every single day, and I took it further. So they were going home doing homework. and Why did you take it further? That's what I'm trying to get to. Why did you take it further? That's all. The, the, the lights were on afterwards. Uh, I enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed it to such a deal. Then we heard who Pelé was. I'm eight. I'm nine. This is Pelé. Santos, but you were good. They were all white. You were good at the time. I was pretty good. I was a, yeah. So the combination... Um, we were good. 10, 12 is when I realized... That's when the kids start, you're seeing something. Well, I'm seeing. We're, we're above... But you were good. So that's what kept, you, kept yeah. you doing it. Yeah, yeah. So you I have was, to be good at it. I, I think to keep good. you motivated. Okay, right. So to be uh, motivated, you, to keep that going, you were getting something from that at that particular time. Oh, you God. were getting some kind of adulation. You were getting uh, responses from other people. Yeah. And that's what you felt that was more powerful than any school could. Give you? Yeah, I. I know that was me. I grew up with my grandmother, great grandmother, and my mentally challenged aunt. I grew up with three women, and I was in an overtop of a highs, you know. And so there was no, there was no right or wrong, and not to get in a philosophical conversation about whatever mother, father, this, that. You will do that. There was no, you will do anything in my life. My grandmother was, was uh, very, very uh, polite. Um, like you a very, very <laughs> uh, a kind person, mm -hmm. um, and uh, um, so I did mother. whatever I liked. Mm -hmm. Did whatever I liked. I went down in the corner, um, and Sonny was okay. Yeah, Sonny, had, Sonny never okay. did any wrong. Right? Did any wrong? <laughs> I didn't do anything wrong. It was just we played ball <laughs> every single. There wasn't much to do wrong. There wasn't much of that 30, 40 guys standing on the corner every evening, and you're going to play ball 10, 12. So I'm playing 10, 12 with. Uh, People like the coach of uh, uh, Brian Ivins and uh, people took time. Um, they were they weren't getting paid. No, there were players yeah, yeah. that did it. Took the, the kid. So yeah. that's another good yeah. thing. When I was when I came around, my eight, ten, ten, twelve, or whatever, they never played soccer. Okay. Never played. Okay. Right. It was some father, or it didn't have a that's clue, right. and so that was it for me. I had to self 
self learn everything kind of seeking self yeah, yes, yeah. different whatever I, you had a little bit of a background with people that actually played the game and and the, the older was, guys are under the lights in yeah. the night and i'm not i'm not doing any you know like going home reading history books or anything like this i'm putting the nets up for them i'm being invited into yeah, you're, you're, these you're, guys. and that you love that Oh, to hear the first time to hear studs walk on a metal floor, <laughs> click, click, click. I was like, my God, this is. You loved it because I remember what you're getting out of it. Uh, yeah, and they're and they're and they're embracing me. One one is uh, I always I always tell Linda, uh, my wife, nobody made fun of me. I like the Temptations and Four Tops. They were all listening to Led Zeppelin, but nobody was going to make fun of me because of I believe in my talent, and. I believe they weren't going to have a go at me. I was so accepted. This, this is pretty simple. I shouldn't say that's simple, but we were talking about this before, is why you continue to play, why you push. There's a goal. There's something somebody's getting out of it. And you're getting what you were just talking about. And you were good. You were getting that out of it, which was such a strong stimulus at that time where you were at, to be accepted in an area that was very good in, in, in playing, and had older players that played, you looked up to, and you were accepted by this group. I tell you, I tell you, you you've already hit on it. I tell you one thing: I was recognizing. If there's anything that not to uh, blow smoke or pat myself on the back, I knew there was more. Just because I was good here, I knew there was more and better. That you had right. I seek to go and take my bike and drive and 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 and, and take it all the way to Dundalk to see Johnny Barazzi. I'm in sales. I knock on doors. I don't care if it says no solicitation. I'm going to get on my bike. I'm going to see what Johnny Brazzi's all about. I want to see what he's about. Ken, hey, I walked up to him after a game in Utz, I mean, uh, uh, Ortman. He, was, he went to Philly or something like this. This kid was 16 year old. You know, I never seen skill like this. Like Johnny. I walked up to him. And to this day, I walk up to you if you have something I want. And I walked You're up there. To figure that out. I, I want to figure it out. I want to know what you do, what you eat, how you go about things, how you think about things. I took my bike and I would go down uh, and I would see him. I would go up to see uh, Pompeii because they played in the afternoon. Patterson Park, uh, Luz Koenig and them guys, we didn't play so much in the afternoon. I went to Pompeii. They played in the afternoon. Ernie Cox, all these guys, Peter Karenji, they played in the afternoon and the evening. I walk up there. I'm going to do whatever I got to do because I want to play. I want to see more skirties hanging out up there. I want to see what he's about. I seen him with the Mohawks. I'm, I'm able to emulate, if possible, whether it's a little bit of uh, the recipe that, that Morgan's right there. I'll grab a little bit of that from her, a little bit of this from you. And I'm going to copy it and I'm going to see whatever well, it you're going to take made. it to what you oh, I can. Do. Yeah. What do they have? How do they treat things? How do they treat people? What are they like? I remember I hit a. Uh, on a little five-a-side with Paul Skirty, and, and I, I felt brave and took this shot. Man, it was terrible, and it was hit the fence. Matt, we play goals, but well, one goal is this way, one goal is that way. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'm with him. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm with Johnny Brad Skirty or, or the older guys over at the Nipro when Marco was coaching these teams. They allowed me to put up nets for them. So they back would, then, there was the Greeks, there was the that's right. Germans, there was Italians, there were these leagues. They it would was, take me to crazy. Bud's, Bud's Crab House <laughs> just to hang out with Danny Woodward, Tommy Wall, uh, uh, Hennigan. This, this is just... So you were getting oh, some... That was brilliant for you. Oh. Yeah, that, that couldn't even... School could not match that. I'm banging them nails in, putting the nails. Hey, Sonny, this, that, and other. Do you think this is... Then why doesn't all these players, why don't all these players have this? I mean, the, again, I, I, you're talking about trying to figure things out. You look at this player, this player. So I'm trying to figure out at this particular, I have been for a long time, why you can't create that. You can't create that. Is this genetics? I, I don't think you can. Is it genetics in the sense to where the, the, the drive? The drive. The drive, but the drive obviously is a stimulus, is a goal that you're trying to achieve. But why do some people have a higher drive than others? What's going to break you every day? You could be taking a shower. You're there like this shower, and people over here are peeing on you. <laughs> you know, and calling you a nasty F this, F what? that. You're effing mother. I'm what my mother does. And, and you know what? It came a point because of the, uh, you know, I broke the 11 in my third year. I never played in 78. I played in 79, uh, 77 a little bit, right? I told you 11 games. 78, it was not even my unit. I walk in. You know what it's like to walk in a, uh, a locker room, not even see. 
wasn't even hanging. I wasn't even part of the yeah, eighteen. That's tough. That's it's a, you tough. don't even feel like you're part of anything. And then you're. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? Uh, if they uh, win. You, you don't feel it. You, you, you know. What clicked was well, Scotland and England had a lot to do with. Like, man, this is rough and this and that. But when the one touch, two touch, click, 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 because I had ability. I knew I had more ability than what was going on over there. They knew that. They knew one thing. I had to learn something else. I learned it when I came back. It was sort of an F you mentality. I, that's what Come and watch me now. When I walked out, we played the Cosmos. I'll never forget this. The hair on my neck was standing up to this day. Telling you right now. And I walked out and I seen some of my, like, man, there's Bogey. Carlos Alberto, Canalia with the striped socks. You know, collars oh, popped. Pop. You know, Carlos <laughs> Alberto and all mm -hmm. this. And, and, and it was, uh, you know, national television and so forth. I, you, whether it sounds arrogant or not, I, I don't give a rat's butt. Yeah, but I this is cool. You're here to watch now. me. Yeah, this is cool. And, and if you take it, I'm coming at you again. And if you happen to do something, I'm coming at you again. And I'll never stop. I'll never stop because I know I'm going to beat you. It's just a feeling. It was a feeling that was created and took some time. See, it? now I'm trying to figure out why it, um, certain people have that. You, either you're going to go with this uh, self-pity. No, but why do people on. have that drive? I mean, where does that drive come from? Is it from disparity where things aren't going so well and you have no other choice and you Maybe, you need yeah. money or you got to get your family out of something? That would seem like a hell of a drive, mm -hmm. right? A reason to do something. But why, you know, why did I have a certain drive? Why did you have a certain drive that pushed you? And, and you have brothers and sisters. Well, I don't. Mm -hmm. Why was mine, so genetically, we're kind of the same a little bit, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So why is mine much stronger than theirs? Is it because of certain things aren't happening in my life that I can control now if I do this? That's part of what still would, I can either go either way. I can say, no, that's too much. Yeah. Or I can say, fuck, heck yeah, with yeah. you. I'm going to go to the next level. I'll prove it to you. Yeah. And I cannot figure, and I, I think <laughs> top pros or pros or people have reached certain levels They've got this all in common. Your story very common to what my thought process yeah, yeah. is. And I, and I know what my reasonings were, and yours seemed very similar because you could control the situation, right? You, you could control that people would come to you because you were good, and you could control that situation. But the better you were, the more people liked you. No. There's, a there's people going to hate you, but you don't care about I that part care. because you know you were good at something, and you knew you could control the situation. There was a, 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 a time that, when I, when I came back, I didn't realize as much ne uh, then than I do now, but it was a click that I went, if I'm going down, because now fighting. I'm going down my effing way. <laughs> so people would say stuff to me and I was going, get the, you know, Stoke, get out of here, shut up, shut up. And, and, <laughs> um, and, and it, everything changed. <laughs> Everything changed when we went on preseason. And I'll never forget, I just cracked the, uh, the 11. I'm playing. Things are going well in 79. 79 was my... That was me. That oh. was it. Everything came oh, the way it should Fitter than a butcher's dog. Mm. And <laughs> um, we went on strike. And we went on strike. Um, I was real close with, with John Kerr. He started the union back in 77. And things were starting to happen. It took a long time. And, and I went on strike. Um, was that 79? I think it was later, wasn't it? Because I, I don't, I'm not sure. No, you might have been. We I started this struggling. union. 78, 79, because it was a, he, he was the head of it, right, yeah. John Kerr? And the NFL, Gene Upshaw, had a lot to do with it. And I was involved. And I believed what we were fighting for. It wasn't like, uh, you, you know, it, it really helps if you understand what the grievances are. Sure. And, and we weren't. It was just that, man, if, if, after six months. Was there a pension? Was there this? Was there that? Well, well you could cut us any day, any second. Right. It was, uh, Without any recourse. I mean, any recourse, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was just things like that. How about medical after whatever? Um, I remember that. And too. FBI stepped in. But I'll never forget this and this feeling and this strength and this confidence that I held. When the strike was over, they were going over directs. And I tell you, it's a, you, you, you'll understand. You know, um, I was on the ball. And they direct were working kicks, on right? directs, mm -hmm. and they and Gordon seen us, the the, the players on strike, come walking over because we had to walk quite a distance to a practice field, RFK. And uh, he says, "Hey, hey guys, Sonny's here." I'll never forget that. 
See, that's you know, that's where that guy has confidence uh, in you, and, 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 and you he's were the man at the time. And we were, we were, you know, we that takes you to the next level, though, won't it? It'll, uh, and then and then Johan came. <laughs> then you, see, that's <laughs> so. Why didn't we were nineteen and eleven? You know, as a team, when you feel like, man, it's going to take a lot to beat us. And it's then, going to take a lot. But Johan took it, took over them basically when he came. Oh in. yeah, oh yeah. See now, as a coach, as a coach. And I, again, I'm not in their situation, so it's hard for me to say that. But I would not let any particular player, I don't care who you were. And that was my, my thing was, if you didn't work hard, and if you weren't good enough at that time, I don't care who the hell you were, you, you don't, do not deserve to be playing. All I want to do is I want to compete. I love competing. I love the high of competing. To the, in the, and if this person was better, well, I had to figure out how it was going to get better than this person, whether it's working hard or whether it was taking people on, whether right. it was doing... And I expect That's the same right. from everybody because I did not join this sport. I did not want to play sports for political reasons. I did not want to do that. I would not play because then that takes everything away. And so I don't care who you are. And as a coach, if everything's not working, and I'm listening to this one, who has control? Well, it's you, or I'm not saying it's him. It's this particular player, not me anymore. Now the players don't believe in me. Now I can't teach. Uh, they, they, they don't have confidence in me. How am I going to instill confidence in them? Right? So I don't under, quite understand that, how a coach allows that, but I guess it could be coming from an upper, upper to where they're saying, listen, this guy could change our team around. He could put us on the map. He's the best player, one of the best players in the world. Right? We have to listen to what he says. Or you're gone, coach. He wasn't. Uh, you're, you're exactly right, and he brought people in. I mean... We went from like eight, seven or eight reporters in a room to like 20. See, that's the difference. And right? tickets and That's and the so political forth. side of it. You know, um, I won't get into a great detail, but Gordon gave great speeches. And, and he even said during the speech, because we weren't doing well in the beginning. It was, we were like two and four or something like that. Of all the things you've done in Barcelona, the world, blah, 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 we would love for you and Danny, his wife, to be... To, we would do everything we can here to make it better, and he toured. He, I don't want to, you know, I don't, I don't know what it's like to be in his position. In his position, That's right. and and other players uh, um, didn't find it. it was a rough season. People, I broke my bone. I got it hit in Wrigley Field in Chicago, Chicago Sting, right? It was just a bone, but damn, it was painful at the time. And I went over, and it was a little bone, and wasn't going to be a big deal. And people came by me and went, "You lucky bastard." That's a million dollar in, in, injury because I didn't have to. Now I was, yeah, I wasn't playing much anyway when he was playing. Um, um, and God, God spoke to me. I uh, I was broken hearted because we were going to play the Cosmos, and I'll never forget that. I'll never forget this. You, 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 you know, it was sold out. RFK sold out, and I've been there since '77. I knew the front office. I've been everything. We knew every everybody was tight, and and. Um, and this was, you know, Johan, Juan Lazar. But anyway, I, I had a number of words and confrontations with, with the people that I admired most, Gordon Bradley, Joe Mallett, and, um, and I had words with them in, in front of this state team down in Fort Lauderdale who picked this effing team. And I go, I don't want to go into it with great detail, but I knew about this upcoming game. Everybody did. And if anything, you knew for the rest of your life Wild World of Sports. Uh, You'll remember this. This, this is, is going to be. What you want. This, this is, is the want. one, and I'm out. Oh, I, no. I, I, I'm like this. Juan, Le, as the midfields, Vim Janssen, Horvath, uh, uh, Juan Lozano, Johan. These are Yo, all great no, players. Don't want nothing great. to do with me. Yeah, he, if he, you know, get him here. Here I, I'm, oh. I'm high score. I'm oh. high score. Listen, I can't compete with Johan. Johan is who he, he is. I sure. don't want it to make it sound like, but in my, you know. But you're in your you mind, you're sound. doing good, and you I'm deserve to be playing. Be. I don't want to bother you. So anyway, they go to Atlanta. Gordon comes up because Gordon ringed me out, and we were like, he even said, son, I feel like father and son. This is how tight we were. He comes up after Fort Lauderdale because I said, who picked this effing team? And Gordon says, I did. Then he goes up and he reams me out, don't ever, blah, blah, blah. But he says, Sonny, my hands are full. This is what he says. This They're world. tied. He can't do anything. My hands are tied. Take the rest of the season off. He said that to you. He said that to me. Because whatever he wants, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. My hands are. 
So I said, ah, shit. Next week they play, they go to Atlanta, right? The following week is, is the game. In the Cosmos. Cosmos. R at RFK. Mm -hmm. See, we did all this because our soccer ball was at RFK that year, mm -hmm. 1980. And, and Sonny Warblin only meant well. Um, um, you know, here's Johan. In other words, here's a gift. Uh, Juan Lozano, if you do. I just got a, a text the other day. It's Juan Lozano's birthday and blah, blah, blah. He only played 10 games. You want to mess with players at that level, they'll mess with you. He was, he was gone. I'm out. My point that I'm making is they go to Atlanta. Juan gets a uh, red card. And, and God bless Gordon, he says to me, um, he calls me, he says, you're playing. In Atlanta? Uh, no, oh, no, New York. Uh, uh, Washington, the sellout. Okay. And big, only because he got the red card, I want your end. And that was huge to me because regardless of what uh, uh, he wanted, I, I was. He Gordon wanted you. Gordon wanted was going to see to it that Try I Try to find a way back. to get you in there. Yeah, and that yeah. was his way of getting you in there. Yeah, and I, I'll never for, forget that. You know, it's... Uh, so did you play in New York? Um, that game was a war, R RFK. Right. It was the first time we sold it out uh -huh. since okay. I've been yeah, with yeah. it. Washington, and it was, right? And it, yeah. Uh -huh. um, we, we sold it out. Um, and it was emotional. It was emotional to the front office. It was emotional to... And, and I'm a student of the game. You know, it's, 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 it's bogey. Carlos Alberto. I fouled 1970 Brazil team. And all this, and it was just, uh, uh, I lived it. You know what I mean? Right, that was you the can, epitome for you at that particular time. That, that, was the that top, game that you was knew it. was going to be huge. revered huge. Today's show is brought to you by Barracuda's Locust Point Tavern, located at 1230 East Ford Avenue, Baltimore. Come down and see Billy Hughes. He's been a chef for over 30 years. Barracuda also has daily specials. The codfish cakes are great. I was down there last week, and I had the fish tacos. Brilliant. Billy puts out a great dish, great atmosphere, friendly. What more else do you want from a place? Neighborhood bar and restaurant. So we were talking, there's so many highs and so many lows with, with the game. And now, what do you think, the, your, your pros and cons of being a professional athlete? The pros of being a professional athlete or building up to be a professional athlete, what are the pros for you? The, the pros was, uh, for me, um, um, the, the, the big spectrum, the big picture was I got to see the world. Um, I was on the U.S. national team. I was in the nucleus. I don't want to sell the fact that I was, you know what I mean? You can sell, the, you can sell anything if you want to put a spin on it. But the, the, I went on a European tour for five weeks. So I got to see, you know, all these places all over the world. Uh, the French national team in Paris, police escorts, the stimula, the people. Uh, the education that I've received uh, doing these things just by doing these things. Traveling, airports, interacting with people, especially different nationalities, and the stimuli, uh, the stimuli of, 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 of usual, I'll speak for myself, a professional, ex-professional athlete of, of over-the-top self-centeredness, uh, but still that, 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 that need to please, um, to be in the limelight, I, I enjoyed liked it all. You loved that. I loved. I loved, loved that part. I loved walking on the field. I loved the subtlety of um, at the highest level. I missed that. I don't miss a lot of things, but I miss. Um, I miss that um, that uh, conversation that you mentioned when you come to not necessarily to watch me at Patterson, but that to, to speak to someone who understands uh, the nuances of inviting somebody in closer to play a one-two because so there's more space, space behind, behind them. them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and not be, because I remember playing against like Michelle Platini. Mm -hmm. What he did to me, I was doing to people. And I went, you son of a bitch. I mean, he invite, roped me in yeah. on this one particular ball. Yeah. To get that, you're I going, you're I took going it, I took it. He popped it over. I said, geez. But I, I missed that. That, the thought that, process behind the yes, whole thing. Yes. So that's your, that's your pros. What are the cons to it? What are the negative aspects to it? And again, not to be negative, but there is. Right. So I, I'm curious from your standpoint, I know what mine were, right? As far as, well, I'll start it off so you don't feel like you're yeah, going into deep water. That'd but, be great. Uh, <laughs> uh, but the negatives for me were the politics. The negatives were some of the people that... Uh, that weren't true. There was some of the ass kissing that went on constantly to get to move yourself up the next level, and that that part I had the hardest time with. I mean, I I just I could I 
I was ready to quit. I was ready. I had enough yeah. of that. Yeah. But I loved the game. Once I was on that field, I loved it. I mean, I don't care where it was, how it was. I mean, I didn't have a choice of playing outdoor. The outdoor, I was drafted by the Tampa Bay Rowdies, yeah, yeah. and that was my thing. I was going, I was going to go to Brazil, and we talked about this before. I was off for three months, but then uh, they, I got word that the league was ready to fold in a year, uh, and then yeah, Baltimore was yeah. coming in and giving me more money, so wow. I had to make a decision. So I, I then went, and you know what the indoor took off, right? The outdoor yes. struggled big time, and then it folded. So uh, that, to me, right, the negative, the, the negativity of it was the people, in a sense, where there were so many clicks and people uh, lying to move themselves up the, the, up the ladder. Uh, that I couldn't take, right? That I had a hard time with it. And I, I, would, I would actually lose it at times. Uh, and I, not, I would never get depressed, but it made me mm -hmm. fought, fight mm -hmm. harder against mm -hmm. these particular type of people, and there would be confrontation. So that was the negative part. And I swore if I ever I got in a certain <laughs> position of power, I would change that. Not power, I shouldn't say power, yeah, of yeah. A, a, a certain position. I would change that. And, and I did my best to change that because I, I believed in your, your integrity. I believed in working your ass off. I, I, I don't, I, and I knew there was trouble as far as not everybody had the perfect scenario, so I wanted to work with that and try to figure it out. Uh, but it, it doesn't happen because it comes from the owner. It comes from then the coach feeling pressure, and then it comes from somebody else, and it just trickles down that mm -hmm. effect. When I believe it doesn't have to, mm -hmm. but the problem is if I go tell the, the owner to go F off, yeah, yeah, or the coach, what yeah. happens? Yeah. I'm gone. Well, I was willing to risk that a couple of times in my career. I, I did heard. That, I, yeah, well, that's, yeah. <laughs> I, I've done that more than, and I've taken up for players also on the yeah, other side, yeah. too. So that was the negative part about it. But the pros outweighed the aggravation. It did. I mean, the pros outweighed the, the getting on the field, the expression, you know, like that's you were right. talking. And then I did have some very good friends from it. And then the learning process, you know, and then the traveling a bit. And all that was, you know, Obviously, outweighed playing 17 years outweighed it for me. Yeah. Uh, you know, after 12 surgeries, 10 surgeries, and when I'm wow. tired. So, but that kept on pushing me. Yeah. I liked yeah. all that so much more than the negative side of it. Yeah. And if I could change it in some of the negative things, I would try to do that as much as possible. But you're limited. And that, that's the part we don't like, I think, yeah. in yeah. a sense to where you're held back. Yeah. Because. As a player, forces, I don't yeah. want to be hold, held back by anything. I want to be creative. Yeah. I want to go out and create something, right? I want to build something. I don't want you to hold me back. And if I felt you were holding me back, well, then it was time for me to, to find something else or I was going to leave or, or I was going to blow up at that particular time. Yeah. And if I was in a position and I blew up, nothing could happen because I put myself in a position while well, we need him. He's, you know, he's scoring goals, he's doing this, he's doing that, he's an all-star. So I could change the, the atmosphere a little bit on my own, but that was the negative part of it. Oh, yeah, you, yeah. So yeah. For, for yourself, what was the well, negative? You, sim you know, very similar. Um, you, you start fighting for, um, you, you know, in, in the, what, one thing I liked about sports is it, if you were, since we'll talk about, say, for instance, the NFL, the owner, cannot have his son as a wide receiver because it's too visual. Mm. He, he can't can play football. In, in other aspects of life, it, it can happen. But to use that um, the exaggeration. So I played on a number of teams, Montreal, the, the Manique, and, and Tampa. I, I, I'll give you what, what I felt I learned quick. I, I felt I picked up when, oh, I see the way this is going. I see the way this is going. So I'll give you an example. I, was a, I had such a wonderful season in 79. So I go, and I'm chosen by Walt Chiswitz, and we're going to go five weeks to, uh, to Europe. And I, and I go, and we're playing the French, the, the French national team, and, and a, a player goes down, right? And they were all that. The, there was Platini. They were all there. It was downtown. It was really exciting. And I knew he had the boys. He had the boys, he, 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 the Olympic team. And, and I I'm okay with the boys. You know what I mean? You got to Who what you got? I got it. I know why I'm invited here because because I had such a wonderful season. You got to take me and blah blah blah. <laughs> yeah, you had to take me. And um, and uh, so and so goes down in the middle of the park, right? Well, there ain't many mid. I'm, I'm the midfielder. I got it, he, and he didn't put me in. Mm. And he put in a back player, tall and lanky, who belongs in the back. Not because he's tall and lanky, but he belongs in the back. 
And he played and in the back. Always put him. And he put him put in. He put, middle, one of his boys. put him in the middle. Yeah. And I went. So we go to Belgium. We go to Belgium. And um, uh, and I can say, I'm not playing. So I can sell this. I'm on this national team. I got four caps. I was involved in four games. But I've, but I've been with them for 20 times. But So take it the way you want. I'm, I'm not a <laughs> national team player. I, I made four <laughs> appearances, right? I'm with you, you. You know what I mean? I, when I was on the youth national team, and you're speaking Walt Chiswitz? Yeah. He was the coach. Okay. And I hated, I, don't, I did not like this man. Yeah. This man was, I'm telling you what, uh, from my, my personal <laughs> experience, he didn't have a clue at that particular time. I didn't learn shit. I only learned from John and, and Gordon. Well, I'm just giving you an example. Yeah. So I played on the National League. I didn't play. Yeah. I played one or two games. My brother came up to see me in Jersey. Yeah. So I'm going home with you. I was leaving the field. So I'm leaving. I'm not telling them anything. I got my stuff in the car. Right? I'm leaving. This was a Princeton. And they said, you can't do that. I, and I stuck it out. And I swore. That, and I swore I was going to get this guy back. Right? In a sense uh, <laughs> that I was going to prove to him. So out of that team, uh, that national team, that youth national team, three of us went pro. I was one of them. Okay. And he played for Phil. He coached Philadelphia then. Philadelphia uh, yeah, team. Yeah. So we're walking up to the end, and I played quite well. I say, Walt, I'll go like this to him, right? And then I get a call from the national, the senior team. Yeah, this yeah. was saying, listen, we, this is after a couple of years. So I want you to come. And the national team wasn't the greatest back then, yeah, right? Yeah, says, yeah. we want you to come to Mission Viejo, come out and train. You know, we want you to come out. I said, now nah, I'm going to Cancun. And yeah, I swear, yeah, because yeah, I didn't want to have any of that happening again because yeah, of that yeah. political. And I could not believe this guy did what he did to me, uh -huh. like not playing or this. And, and it, it's not because I didn't deserve it. <laughs> and I, I had enough of that. But I know what you're talking about, right? You didn't play much for the national. I, so, but I'm, I'm in Paris. Uh, and then we go to Spain. And now we're going to Belgium, right? And I'll never forget. And I'm going, man, it's cold. Right. And I, <laughs> it's it's cold. cold. And I'm going, you know, I feel a little bit bad. I said, I'm not going. I'm in my hotel. It's a nice place. And you said, what do you mean? I said, it's a I nice said, what place. do you mean you're not going? I said, I no, tell no, my I'm not I, playing. I, I, I feel part of this. Gotta, yeah. so I think, I, if I'm not mistaken, in 78, the Orioles were in the World Series. <laughs> I've listened. And, it, and the, the, the radio came. And the Orioles were one. I said, no, nah, I'm listening to, I'm the listening to this. Tell Walt, I'm not going. Is he your coach? Yeah, Walt. Holy shit. So then we go to play Hungary, who finished fourth in 78 World Cup. Now we're in Budapest. And I think this was meant to be. They told me to run the, the, uh, the 11 down. They said, run down to the referees. So we're playing the Hungarian national team, right? So I didn't go to, in Belgium, by the way. I didn't go. I didn't go to the lobby. <laughs> Just tell them I'm not going. I, you shouldn't do this kind of stuff. But, I, they, you know, right. I'm not saying every decision I made was great. But anyway, Bob Ganser, we're, we're Ganser running. was the same coach. Yeah, we're, we're warming up in Hungary. They're warming up. I'm telling you, it's freezing. They're throwing batteries at us and all this crap and all this. And I'm going like this, man, this is cold. <laughs> and and I, seen, I seen the 18. I wasn't in the, I wasn't in the 18. You were in the 30. I was in it. And I'm going <laughs> like this. But they knew I must have. And he comes up to me. He says, why aren't you warming up? I said, I'm not in the 18. What do you want me to do? Get a sweat on and then sit this? I ain't doing that. You go warm up. You want to warm up? You warm up, Bob. He he was he's assistant. Assistant, I'm, right? But that's how the attitude that I was starting to like. Uh, I knew I, I knew what's going. Cool. Hey, I'm okay with you guys. Just let me. You know, and that's the pros. That's the cons to it. it. That's the cons to all this. This. You can get away with you. You know, you can see a better player. But if somebody is kind of uh, um, can uh, hold their own there, because he might like them. He's from South Africa. And he's the coach. Right? He's from South Africa. Right there. You know, Team America was put together. To, in case the World Cup came. It was given to Mexico. But I'll tell you a story. Nobody would probably like to hear this, but this is a fact. In the first Team America, because they put the group of these guys together that were going to be uh, hopefully playing the World Cup. Because right, if, if it's in the U.S., you're in. Mm -hmm. You don't have to qualify. Right. Well, it was given to Mexico. But anyway, Team America's going to play, was formed, and they're going to play in the NASL. The first game, two Americans didn't start. I mean, two foreigners started. I'm, I'm telling you, so I'm sitting there. I, I didn't start in the beginning. I played 13 games for Team America um, for Alcas Panagolius. And um, uh, I, I hope if we got enough time, I'll, I'll tell you to get back to that desire. He, 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 anyway, so <laughs> Alan Green starts. Alan Green starts and Andy uh, somebody, Andy somebody. 
I don't give a rat's. Right. I'm, I'm thinking there's two right. foreigners because they're tr they're still trying to get whatever Citizenship, visas, citizens, citizens, right. citizens, green cards, yeah, what yeah, have yeah. you. And I'm going, you know what? This is a. Uh, but anyway, I play 13 games, and and I'm ready to quit. I'm in Tampa because 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 I'm tired of his crap. Alcus was very verbal, very verbal, very humiliating. Greek right, demeaning. national right. team, and I, and I'll never forget. And this is this is I think something that we share strongly together. So we're we're in Tampa, and I remember taking. There's one minute left. We're up a goal, and Boris Bandolf hits his ball across. It's, it's one minute left. He hits a corner instead of taking a short corner. It should have been a short mm -hmm. corner because he killed the time. Time we're done. Out. Right. If he takes the corner, could go to the keeper. Keep, he kicks it, it down. Goes, there's yep. a chance. It doesn't work. He reams out Boris by Boris by Boris Bandolf. So I'm done. I called Linda after I said, Lynn, I don't know what I'm <laughs> going to do. This is no lie. I swear, right here in the guy. I said, but I'm done. I ain't taking any more of his, you know, crap. I'm not doing it. I, I'm ready to, to have a go at him. It's going to be ugly and this, that, and the other. We're flying home from Tampa. And we're going to play Juventus in RFK. And I'm here, and, and we're, I'm here at the airport, and, and, and they, they call it, Nash, it was national. Now it's Reagan. Mm -hmm. And I'm standing, I had it. And I'm just waiting for this guy. And he, he smoked a cigar, blah, 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 and he walks over to me, always holding the newspaper. Because he's a type to say during pregame meal, hey, Sonny, um, do, you, do you need any sauce? In other words, have as much sauce with that steak as you like because you're not playing. Plain. Oh. But you like A1? Hey, give Sonny some A1 sauce in front of the whole team. And this was building and building and building. So we're in the airport, and he says, hey, tomorrow night. I didn't, I, I didn't start for Team America at the time. He says, uh, hey, he walks up to me, this jolly, joking, charismatic whoever he thinks he is, and says, you're Mark and Tardelli tomorrow night. And I said, right, right. Well, I think you could read that, right? Those he lips, says, I did. Uh, it's okay, it's good. I said, right. just like that in his face, get away from me. And if anybody's marking anybody, he'll be marking me. Brilliant. Get the F away. And that, he embraced He liked like, that. I started the rest of the season. No kidding. You know? And that's what it took, that's maybe. That's what it took. I don't know what, it, that's what he, but I'll never forget that. He goes, you that's what I've been looking for. See, I don't know whether I, that, I, don't know. I don't know. That's crazy. That's crazy. Why wouldn't he have known this in the beginning that you had that anyway? I see there. That, I don't <laughs> yeah. know about that one, but that, that, that's a trip. Anyway, <laughs> we're on what? Two hours now almost, Morgan? 1.30, okay. Listen. It's 1.30? Uh, no, it's, no, 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 oh, no. Oh, we're oh. hour and 30 minutes. Oh, oh. It's been brilliant. Uh, Sonny's been brilliant. This is something I've been wanting to do. You can see some, a lot of these similarities that we go through. And uh, <clears throat> with these podcasts and these videos, uh, what I'm trying to do is explore the different personalities and the similarities of uh, coaches, players, pros, what they've gone through. And so I think we've touched on that a little bit in these last three episodes. Uh, we'll probably do another three. And then I'd like to thank Sonny for coming here and giving me an hour and a half of his time. And hopefully we'll do this again. So, yeah, that'd be brilliant. Great. Oh, brilliant. Thank you, appreciate man. It. Uh, thanks. thanks. I appreciate thanks it. Thanks for uh, reaching out. Cool. Today's show is brought to you by Gunpowder Lodge. It's the number one place to watch Premier League and all your soccer games in Baltimore County. For great food, great people, great atmosphere, featuring weekly chef specials. They also have a great setup with outside seating and a fenced-in children's playground next to the Gunpowder River. Happy hours, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m., located at 10092 Bel Air Road, Kingsville, Maryland.